Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to go over what in my opinion are the 5 rarest armor sets in The Witcher 3. Well, technically it's gonna be more than 5, but bear with me. Also, as it was with my rare weapons video, the criteria based on which I feature the armor sets here is extremely unscientific. It's mostly about items that are easy to miss, or have an interesting look, or something else that's curious about them, and not really about which armors are the best from a gameplay perspective. So with that out of the way, let me remind you that this video may contain some pretty sizable spoilers, and also that I've made a whole bunch like it already, all of which you can check in the playlist down in the description. Go ahead, check. Touch me, white-haired one. For number one, I would be remiss if I didn't start with probably the most popular question in the history of my YouTube channel, one that I still get sometimes after more than five years of Witcher videos, and that is, what armor is this? Where did you get it? Is it a mod? Is it a version of the Bear School armor? What the hell are you wearing? And the answer to that is no. This is actually a piece of armor that came with the free DLC campaign of the game, which everyone should have access to. It's called the Undvik set, and it is available at the armorer just after the bridge which leads inside Kerr Trolder's castle. Wouldn't mind a few rounds of cards. It also comes along with matching horse gear, and while stat-wise you'll probably prefer the Bear School armor, I still think this looks really good and I do use it quite often. Now before I move on to number 2, let me give a couple of honorable mentions to the Temerian and Nilfgaardian sets. They are also available as free DLC and have matching horse gear as well. The Temerian armor is sold by the vendor at the Bridge of White Orchard, while the Nilfgaardian armor is sold inside Crow's Perch. You know, the Bloody Baron's estate. Common folks say witches, wizardry, devils and who knows what the fuck else every which way they turn. The Nilfgaardian one also has one of the best looking saddles and blinders in the entire game, as far as I'm concerned at least. And yeah, time to move on to number 2. And for that, we go all the way to Blood and Wine. You know Damien, the leader of the Ducal Guard? I quite like his armor, and there is actually a set available in the game which gets really close to it. It is called the Tucson Ducal Guard Captain's Armor, and it can be crafted once you obtain all the diagrams. I mean, I suppose once you have one diagram you can craft that one, but you know what I mean. So let me quickly show you where they are. The first couple of diagrams are in these ruins where you fight an Alp. It's just south of Fort Astra. The third diagram is found south of the Cockatrice Inn on a hanged man's body. This may be familiar to those of you who have seen my Vampire Conspiracy video, I did mention it for other reasons there. And the final one is located at the very top of the very top Hansa base over here. So this armor set gets you fairly close to Damien, as I said, but he's actually wearing different gloves, and I'm not even sure if they are available in the game. I think they're the same model as one of the Tucson Knight armors, so if any of you knows exactly where to get this kind of gloves, feel free to comment down below. Okay, moving on to number three. Come on! In the initial stages of this video, I told myself I won't include any Witcher sets, because they're quite popular anyway, but in this point I actually want to mention two of them for different reasons. The first one is the legendary Manticore armor. It can be obtained in Blood and Wine once again, by simply tracking the quest from the Grandmaster Armorer, but the curious thing about it is that it is the only Witcher set that changes appearance between the regular game and New Game Plus. In New Game Plus, this ragged looking chainmail is added, and I quite like how it looks. It's one of my favorite sets actually, not only because of the appearance, but also because I very much enjoy using bombs. The whole of us! At once! Take him alive! Well, how long are you gonna make me wait? And the second Witcher set I'd like to mention is the Viper one from Hearts of Stone. What now, you piece of filth? If memory serves me right, there is no other way to obtain the diagrams unless you purchase them from the Countess in the auction house. You know, that is Vesemir's lover, who's voiced by Yennefer. I've some 
pleasant associations, dating from my oh-so-distant youth. So if I'm correct, that makes it more rare and easily missable than the rest, since if you don't do it, there's no other way of finding this countess. Not one that I know of, at least. Also, a curious detail about it, which sadly is nearly impossible to notice during actual gameplay, is that it has these viper-like scales on it, which are pretty neat. Okay, I think this wraps up number 3, time for number 4. And once again I'd like to mention two armor sets here, because they are in a way related, or more accurately, mutually exclusive. It is impossible, at least without cheating or exploits, to get both of them in a single walkthrough. I did allude to them in my Rare Weapons video, because the armor sets have matching swords, but still, here they are. First off, in the Land of Thousand Fables, we have the Tucson armor set. It belonged to a knight who entered the fairy tale land seeking a princess and ended up being killed by pixies. And he's delicious. The easiest way to find it is by following a wisp, which is located right here between the Boy Who Cried Wolf and Longlock's Tower. As I mentioned before, the model of this set is not unique, but the colors and textures are quite remarkable. And as you can probably guess, the second set is the Hen however it's pronounced, which is located in the Unseen Elder's Lair. The pieces of it are not too difficult to discover, they are each located in chests just off the main road, or rather the main tunnel path, and there may even be one or two pieces that are right in front of you on the main path as well. Now some of you may say that there is a legitimate way of coming back to the Unseen Elder's Cave after going to the fairy tale land by taking the key first and then changing your mind, and that is true, However, you still cannot obtain the full set, because some of the pieces are in the area where you can only go during the quest itself. So ultimately, you cannot have both of these in a single walkthrough. What you can have, instead of the Dracula set, is a black version of it, which can be obtained during Regis's quest in Tesha Mutna. Also fairly easy to do so, just loot everything along the way and you're all set. No pun intended. Alright, and finally, we get to the last one, which is not really armor at all, so I may have deceived you a little bit here, but I find it quite interesting, so why not? It is the ultimate solution to the problem of not being able to wear the professor's glasses and the ass ears at the same time. <laughs> the item is called Concealment Kit, and when crafted, it combines the glasses and the ears into a single, wearable item that goes into your mask slot. There is even a supposed effect which lets you blend into crowds, but as far as I can tell it's just a pun, and it doesn't actually do anything, except looking marvelous. And it's quite rare to find, I suppose. It's located over here, in a box, under the stairs, which leads to the platform where you go to shoot your crossbow at this poor guy. The bastard hit me! What's even more curious is that the box spawns only after you complete the first two wishes. Or at least it seems that way based on my observations. So if you wish to claim it, you'll have to return a little bit later to the same spot. And with that said, I believe we're done. I'm not exactly sure what day I'll publish this video and how much time I'll have left after it, but it may as well be my final one before the release of Cyberpunk. Which is both sad and exciting at the same time, um, I've gotten so used to making Witcher 3 videos that it's almost like part of me wishes to continue doing this forever. And I will, I suppose, as long as I have something to talk about. So this will definitely not be the last Witcher video you see from me, however they will slow down in favor of Cyberpunk. And yes, there's not gonna be any parting words or goodbyes or anything like that, I just want to thank you all for watching and for your support. Let me know if you think I should have included any other armor sets in this video, or just anything you wish really. And as usual, until the next one, stay tuned and be good.
Hey there. <laughs>